I'd like to start today's video off with a question. Why do people still shoot rangefinder cameras? Some will argue that early rangefinder cameras still maintained an image quality kind of edge over SLR cameras because in, in a rangefinder you don't have a mirror. You don't need to make space for a mirror. And because you don't need to make space for a mirror, you can bring the lens elements or the glass of the lens even closer to that actual focal field or that, that image plane. And in this case, that image plane is the film. Okay, yeah, I can, I can buy that. Not having as much clutter in front of the film, bring that lens closer, closer lens, better image. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Other people will lay claim that rangefinders are better because when you're taking an image, you don't have any blackout. And what blackout refers to is the very short period of time in an SLR camera when the mirror flips up so that the shutter can actually do its thing and you can expose the film. I don't know if I really buy this reason to shoot on rangefinder cameras. I mean, if the concept of not having any blackout is kind of like follow through on a golf swing where you hold your swing after you've already hit the ball to really make sure that everything's perfect, then wouldn't you want to just be looking around and observing your surroundings directly? It seems like if that's what you're looking for, that just looking away from the viewfinder and looking around at your surroundings would be better anyways. And to say that you get a better perception through a rangefinder than you do through an SLR, I think would be wrong because in an SLR, you're looking right through the lens. You're literally seeing what the lens sees. Whereas on a rangefinder, you're never seeing what the lens sees. So what does it matter if there's no blackout if you're not actually perceiving what the lens is perceiving? However, there are two big arguments that I see some logic in for shooting on a rangefinder camera. Firstly, rangefinders are really compact and they're generally pretty durable. That makes them great for street photography and that also makes them great for travel when you are kind of tight on space and you need something that can take a beating. The second reason, and the reason I believe the Leica M3 is still so popular today, these cameras are ingenious pieces of industrial design. They're well put together. They don't get in between you and the photograph. They just let you be in control of the settings without overwhelming you with inputs. They're really quick to operate and they're easy to replicate the same actions on over and over again and, and replicate those same qualities in your photos every single time. So what if you find yourself drawn to an M3, but you don't want to pay upwards of a thousand dollars for a camera body just to feel that industrial design? Well, cue the Canon P. Looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? Well, there's probably a few reasons for that and we're gonna dive into them. Before we talk about the Canon P today, I'd like to just kind of step back and talk about it historically for just a second. The Leica M3 was originally released in 1954 and it was greeted by almost instantaneous widespread popularity among professional photographers. I mean, it really changed the game. It, it had multiple frame lines that switched when you put that particular lens on the camera. It had a bright and full viewfinder. It had a shutter that would go down to one one thousandth of a second, something that we kind of take for granted nowadays. And it, it had an incredibly accurate rangefinder system. I mean, the system on the, the rangefinder system on the M3 is still regarded as one of the best rangefinder systems in the world. So then it made sense in 1958 when the Canon P was released, and it had almost all of the same features of the M3 and more, that it was also really popular. The Canon P had a really bright and easy to use viewfinder with multiple frame lines, just like the M3. I mean, of course they didn't do that cool trick where they switch the frame lines when you switch the lens. It was just set frame lines, but they're still very easy to use. It had the one one thousandth of a second shutter. It even had a couple of extra things like 35 millimeter frame lines, which the M3 did not have. And so because of all of these features, because it was essentially a cheaper M3 with even more features, 
it was Canon's most popular rangefinder camera of all time. And not only that, it was one of the most popular rangefinders of all time. The Canon P had better sales figures overall than all of Nikon's rangefinder cameras combined. So it was a great camera back then, and it's still a great camera today. And yes, you might say that the Canon P is just a clone of the M3 with a few innovations to make it a little bit easier for just kind of the average everyday shooter to use this camera. The rewind toggle is a knurled ring that's integrated with the shutter button. It's almost impossible to toggle on accident. The frame counter is easy to read and it resets every time you open the film back. The full back film door made it really, really easy to load film. The rewind lever is cleverly recessed into the top plate of the camera to maintain the really clean lines, the aesthetically pleasing lines of the camera. I mean, honestly, it was like Leica was consulting with Canon on every step of the way for the Canon P, and I love it. And the best part about this camera is that it's, it's pretty cheap. I mean, Cheap's all relative, right? It's, it's kind of in the eyes of the beholder on that one. But in comparison to its nearest competition, which in my humble and probably misguided opinion would be the M3, you're getting quite a steal of a deal on the Canon P. You can find these bodies for $100 or $150 and yes, they might have a few issues and you might have to spend just a little bit more than that to get a mint one But heck you could spend under $300 and get this whole setup a, a body and a lens to go out and shoot with and Yes, it does. I mean, I don't have one here to show you but But I can tell you that it does feel a lot like an M3. I mean if you're pining after an M3 for its beautiful design, it's simple functionality, and it's great compactness, well, you might consider this alternative. I think your wallet would probably thank me. And if you're anything like me, I think you'll fall in love with the Canon P, just like I did. And that's a wrap, folks. We're doing it. That's, we're doing it live. That's all I got. Um, worked out well. <laughs>